as we start working on this, this space, there's not a whole lot. The quiz will look just like this, same number of questions, but it'll look longer because I gave you more space to work. Um, so in the first section, what questions do we want to see go over, have questions about? Three, five. And five. Four. Okay, so we're going to do three, not two, five, not four. We can do one, but that's it for that second. So starting with three. If they give you other variables, use those variables. You can still write which one is like your Y, which one is like your X. Make sure you're paying attention. So A would be like your Y, B is like your X. But don't write that. Use A and B. Write your original equation so you know how that would look with your original variables. A equals right, KE. Notice that at the top here, your original equation is given. You can always go back and refer to that. They're also on the vocab wall as they happen. So we can find our k value by doing b over a. If you divide this and it's a nice fraction or nice decimal, you can leave it as a decimal. If it's a repeating decimal, leave it as a fraction. So you can leave it as a decimal since it's nice. Then it's asking us to find B when A is negative 6. So A equals negative point three seven five B is what our equation would look like. We have A and need to solve for B. So divide both sides by negative point three seven five. What is your B value? Six, even? Okay. Questions on that before we move on to five? second, then you did it first. So our equation, you can either still use x and y as your variable since they didn't give us any, or change them, do whatever you want, they just have to be two different things. Interest comes first, so that's your y. Amount deposited would be your x. Still write your original equation, so you know how it's supposed to be set up, especially if you change the variables or if the variables were different. Find your k value by doing y over x. What is that k value? You will get a decimal. $2,000 in her account. So this is asking for 
why the interest? Because they give you the amount in hotel. That's why. What would your Y value be? You could put money per hour or money per however much time. You could also just put money. So, Also, if you're not sure, you can put these into your calculator. So let's say this one we weren't sure about, and I put a number. I would go into my y equals, type that in as x over 2, and graph it. And it's going to show you whether it's a line or not, and whether that line goes through the origin. Or not. So if it does, then it's correct. If it doesn't, then it's not. Starting in the next objective, do we have questions on six? I want to see that before we move on. Yes. So now this is inverse. So it needs to look like this, or how we find k, which is y times x. Does this first one look like that? Also, your x is in your numerator, so that's not inverse. This next one is how we find k, so that is. What about this next one? This one is direct, as was the first one. This one has x in the denominator, so that is inverse. What about this next one? That one is a little bit like this. Yeah. Even though it has the negative, disregard that. It's still direct, uh, still inventory. And then this last one. Again, if you're not sure, you can put it in your calculator, double check to see what it looks like. So let's say for this one, we want sure. 
And we'll put that in. Go back to your y equals. And it was 4 over 3x. Graph it, and it would make that hyperbola shape. And that's how you know it's that inverse. We can do 7 or 9, 8 if needed, and then 10 or 11. Which of those do we want to see go over have questions about? Seven. So we do seven or nine, and we got seven first. But I'll briefly say that they are the same. Um, any others in that section? Okay. Your stuff is right there. Okay. Do you want this now or after the look over? Okay, let me know. Um, four seven is asking you to find the inverse variation equation. So don't do more than what it asks for. It gives you x and y. Um, so you don't have to keep flipping back and forth. You can write your equation up top. Y equals k over x. K equals y times x. We need to find our k and then write our equation. So multiply 4 and 5. After you have your k, put that into your equation. Nothing else we need to do or solve, anything like that, that is our final answer. Nine, I will say, is the same, but it gives you order paired, which is x, which is y. We solved it to find k, but we don't need to solve it to find anything else. So we'll skip down to 11. For 11, the number of revolutions made by a tire traveling over a fixed distance varies inversely to the radius of the tire. So that first one would be your y, second one would be your x, or if you want to call them other things, do that. Just not r and r unless you change one to the other case or case. So then a 10 inch radius tire makes 110 revolutions to travel a certain distance. Use those numbers, find your k. What is that k value? into your inverse variation equation, y equals 13.20 over x. And again, I'm sorry about the space, I know it's not the elastic. How many revolutions would a 15 inch radius tire require? What are we looking for? x or y. Are you looking for x? We're looking for y, the revolutions were given x. So put your x value in. And find that y value. This comes with you want these. That makes sense. <laughs> Sometimes I have to use multiple those in the spheres. 
Uh, revolutions is how many times a tire spins completely. Questions on that one? We did 11, we did 7. Did we have questions on 8? Or want to see 8 before we move on to the next one? Yes. Um, I also forgot for your work on them, still put your original equation. I'm sorry, this is inverse. I wrote the wrong thing. Alright, so for eight. We are looking for x after we have y. We know it's going to be inverse y equals k over x. Use the numbers given, find k. Leave one third as a fraction, because it's going to be a repeating decimal. We have y equals 13 over 3 over x. It doesn't really look nice, so I'm going to talk about how we can fix that. Here it says what is x equal when y is 1.9. So if you put that in and start to solve for x, how would we do that? Um, could do that. Multiplying my on both sides would work, but then you would create multiple steps. Instead of doing that, how would we get the x out of the denominator? On both sides. Mm -hmm. So we multiply by x on both sides, we have 1.9x, and then equals 13 over 3, and then we have to divide by 1.9. So in your calculator, I'll show you how you should put that in. I would take the 13 over 3, put it in as a fraction, alpha y equals, you see I've done this already. And then come out of the fraction and divide it by 1.9. That way you're not worrying about a fraction within a fraction. So 2.2 .2 or 2.3, 2.28. You can put as many decimals as you want. Whatever number you stop at, just make sure you round that last one. What you could also do to kind of avoid the whole fraction thing is take your fraction and store it. So put in your fraction, store it as some, excuse me, other variable. Probably not x, since you're solving for x, you don't want to confuse that. So I'm going to call it z, you can call it y. Anything else is probably not x. And then instead of me taking the fraction and dividing it by 1.9, I can take that variable and divide it by 1.9. So I'm going to do that correctly. So either or, how you do that is up here. Questions on 8. Then in the last section, what questions did we have? I want to see you go over.
Let's look at those and we'll talk about some other groups. So starting with 14, 12 through 15 are just setting up your equation, not solving, not doing anything else. So S varies inversely. Remember that inversely is dividing jointly slash directly or multiplying, except jointly has more variables. So S varies inversely. As the square root of R, we're going to divide this, we need a K, so S equals K, put that in right after, square root of R, we would be dividing that. that one also. Questions on that one? Seventeen. Set up your equation first. So C varies inversely, so we're dividing B, and then directly as A, so multiply the A. So C varies, so C equals K. Inversely as B, we're dividing B, and then directly as A. You can either put A off to the side, or put it up either or it's not in the denominator then we can take the numbers we're given and put them in start solving for k so c is 2 don't know k b is 56 And then A is one half. Then you can use those to start to solve for K. We could say two equals K over 112. Multiply both sides by 112. Then put that back into your original equation. Look at your other numbers that you're given. So here we have to find B and we're given A and C. C is 10. And A is 14. Multiply 224 and 14. And then to solve for B, we would multiply by B on both sides and bring it out of space. And then divide both sides. 313.6 is that final answer. Questions on that one? Alright, and then 19. The cost C for that of materials for that very jointly with the width and the length. So all the variables are going to be next to each other. C equals K times, it could be W and L, X and Y, Y and Z, doesn't matter. That's L. If a debt costs 1440, when the width is 12 and the length is 20, Put those in, start to solve for K. Multiply 12 and 20, what do you get? Is that 
then we would divide both sides by 240, which would give us what? 410. Six. Okay. Then put that back in. C equals 6 WL. It asks, what will a deck that is 107 feet wide by 4 feet long cost? So we're looking for the cost. Multiply all those and figure out your cost. Notice that it says round to the nearest dollar, so if you had decimals in there, you would either round up or round down, depending on that. And I'm going to solve 16 or 18, but if you want to see how it would be set up, I could do either of those or any other setup things. So x very jointly is going to be very similar to how we just set up 19. x equals k times y times put them right next to each other. So again, the very jointly, z equals k times v times g, and inversely, we're dividing everything by g. Any others we want to see set up? For 18, notice this, that this says cube, not cube root. So raised to the third power, not the cube root of. Any other questions in general or specifically? If not, go ahead and put your cell phones up in a calculator pocket, not on your person, not in your bags, and clear off your desk.